Okay, so I'll give you a quick review of the way inverses work. So suppose I have this function f of x equals 3x minus 5. I want to find f inverse of 13. This is equal to the value that I need to plug in for this x so that the answer to this is 13. So to find the value of f inverse of 13, we need to solve this equation here for x. We start by adding 5 to both sides. We get 3x equals 18. Now we divide both sides by 3, and we get x is equal to 6. So that tells us that f inverse of 13 is equal to 6, because 6 plugged in for this x gives us 13 when we do this computation. Okay, so that's the way inverses work. The input of f inverse is an output of f, and the inputs of f are the outputs of f inverse. In this video, I'm going to talk about the inverses of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So here are their graphs. What you first notice is that none of these graphs, none of these functions, are one-to-one. -one. And what that means is that as they stand, none of, the, none of these functions have an inverse that's a function. So what we need to start by doing in order to define the inverse is we need to restrict the domain of each of these to an interval that for which it is one-to-one. -one. Okay, so we're going to do that as follows. Okay, while we could have chosen any portion of this that we wanted, the convention is to use the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for the sine function. So you see here, this does pass the horizontal line test, so the the, uh, this function with this restricted domain has an inverse that's a function. For cosine, we restrict the domain to, from 0 to pi, so that there it's 1 to 1. And finally, for tangent, we restrict the domain to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so let me recap that. Okay, now remember that the domain and the range switch between the function and the inverse function. So negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is the domain of sine of x. So it's going to become the range of the inverse. Negative 1 to 1 is the range of the sine. So it becomes the domain of the inverse. Okay, 0 to pi is the domain of cosine, so it becomes the range of the inverse cosine. Negative 1 to 1 is the domain, I'm sorry, negative 1 to 1 is the range of cosine, so it becomes the domain of the inverse. And finally, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, exclusive of the endpoints, is the domain of the tangent. So it becomes the range of the inverse tangent. And negative infinity to infinity is the range of the tangent. So it becomes the domain of the inverse tangent. Okay, I'll write that down for you here. Okay, so this is a recap of uh, what I just said. And so finally, let me give you the notation for each of these. Okay, the notation for the inverse of sine is y equals, you have an sin with a superscript of negative 1, okay, so consistent with the notation for the inverse in general. Okay, so that's the inverse sine of x, or sometimes you'll see it written as arc sine of x. These two mean the exact same thing. So arc sine of x and inverse sine of x are both the inverses of the sine function. Okay, similarly for cosine, we have this. Okay, so it's inverse cosine of x or arc cosine of x. And finally, the notation for the inverse of tangent is this, tan inverse of x or arc tangent of x. They both mean the same thing. Okay, so let's see how the arc sine function works. Okay, so remember that 
The outputs of the sine are the inputs of the inverse. So if I want to evaluate the inverse sine of negative 1, I'm looking for which of these angles here the value of the sine is negative 1, and that's negative pi over 2. If I want to evaluate the inverse sine of 0, I'm saying the sine of what equals 0. Okay, so that's the output, and I want to know what the angle has to be so that the sine is equal to 0, and that's 0. The inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2, I'm saying the sine of what is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, and the answer to that, you see, is pi over 3. Okay, let me give you a couple to try. Okay, press pause while you work on these two. Okay, the arc sine of negative 1 half is negative pi over 6, since the sine of negative pi over 6 equals negative 1 half. Similarly, the arc sine, which is again the inverse sine of 1 half, is equal to pi over 6, since the sine of pi over 6 equals 1 half. Okay, use these two tables here to evaluate these two inverse functions. Press pause while you work on it. Okay, the inverse cosine of negative 1 is pi, since the cosine of pi is negative 1, and the inverse tangent of 1 over root 3 is pi over 6, since the tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3.